All right, time to get back into the pharmaceutical corporation. Unfortunately, the blood of the castle kidnapped Dachi in the meantime, so hopefully will not be brainwashed by the time he gets back. <laughs> anyway, so regarding that interview so with the director of this game supposedly being a massive dick, uh, I've looked back at Matt McMissus's What Happened video of uh, this game, mm -hmm. and it seems to be like it's a case where maybe it did happen, however, unlike a lot of other cases, there's, there's not a lot of people corroborating what he said, and the fact that there didn't seem to be any massive layoffs. Also, um, Estevaz came back to say that supposedly the guy who was dogging him about him was the one guy who got fired, so it could have been just something to, you know, pro-shaded him, could have been slander mm. or whatnot. Again, again, I guess again, it is possible that maybe he was a little tough on them, and maybe a bit more than necessary, but... There does not seem to be a lot to suggest that it was like, you know, saying oh, something on. like... There's something in it to, to read for the new items. Stolas Clock. Among the relics coveted most by intelligent creatures of the abyss are the clocks of Stolas, the demon prince. As a guardian of wisdom and master in the art of suffering, he used the time to enclose the ashes of thousands of tortured bodies in fragile glass containers. When released, the ashes enveloped the punished enemies slowing the passage of time, taking away a greater amount of combat experience when stimulated with pain. Essentially, drop mm -hmm. one of these to farm quickly and slow down time. Go ahead, Jova. There's also the fact that Matt also mentioned that if if such tomfoolery like this was going on in the company, Nintendo, who are very intense about doing background checks on companies that they hire, mm -hmm. probably would have picked that up and said, yeah, no thank you. Like, okay, look, Nintendo have a lot of problems. But if there's one thing that seems to be consistent is that they do not tolerate abuse to employees. Or at the very least, they don't want to have anything to do with studios that actually practice that. Yeah. Kudos to them for that. I wish certain there other companies that. could be that responsible, but yeah, okay. So, again, going off of the knowledge that we do know, while it is possible that maybe some shenanigans occurred within the company during the making of this game, it does not look to be a clear-cut case of it, and there seems to be a lot more suggesting that the guy is genuinely nice. Lord knows, David Cox had I pretty much nothing but good the, stuff to I say. Did, I did track a couple of some other, you know, not episode, but you know, like say, um, occasional stuff that, uh, that he mentioned in interviews and everything for the guy. The guy is kind of similar to Joseph Ferris, he just has a bit of a brash attitude. But overall, he just does it to have fun, you know, rather than not actually offend people. Are you referring to Dave Cox or Estevez? Estevez. Estevez. Dave Cox is actually very chill. Oh, yeah. I'm... Like, he's like one of the most wholesome guys in the industry. I just I've destroyed seen. the entire room. How did everything respond so quickly? But, yeah, going back to the game here, again. I do feel like sometimes the interior sections of the future bits get a little too samey. And, you know, again, it's not enough to kill the game for me i still enjoy it but it really does seem well, a bit dull in that regard like okay remember one of our complaints about uh, spider-man uh, uh edge Shadow dimension no 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 no. it was the time traveling one uh edge of time yes yeah yeah, time. yeah 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 edge of time one of our complaints was like well because it takes place in the building you don't get to take advantage of the things that make spider-man spider-man I'd say we have a bit of a similar case here where, again, yeah. Oh, let me Cas show these. Oh, go on, sorry. Castlevania is no stranger to interior stuff, but often stuff that's constantly changing and making you constantly guessing here and there. Whereas, you know, in, say, cases like this, it's more often than not facility building, facility building. Maybe a sewer here and there. And Actually, you don't spend bit. much time. Time. Like I said, I don't, you don't spend too much time inside building. It's always constantly moving through the streets. And, you know, sure, you, there are buildings that you actually enter in and do some mini dungeons, but not to the point of being, you know, big as, say, a Zelda one. In fact, we're actually going to finish the, um, the pharmaceutical corporation in just about a couple of minutes. Maybe it varies based off of how much we put it. And like I said, it's not going to kill the game for me. But I can see why people would have preferred the castle segments over the future segments, because 
Again, or, mind you, from my experience, what I remember more is the interior stuff rather than the outside stuff, which I guess to me suggests that there is definitely more focus on yeah, the interior stuff. Yeah, let me explain stuff. this. Uh, when you transform into a rat, you're literally the leader of the tank, uh, and you only have a finite amount of rats that you can actually possess. So if you die in one of them, you drop your body surf into another. Finish all of them, and essentially your battle career booted back to the spawning point of the, of the pack. And you have to wait a bit. These sections actually are a bit similar to the ones also on the, the RC car in the Sly games. We actually had to pass through the vents like that. I think... And also, I absolutely love the theme that Oscar actually composed for this section. That again goes super sneaky and yet dreadful. You know, for as much as I joke, I don't mind turning into a rat. Again, I do feel like it's a missed opportunity that we don't get more mobile segments where we play as a bat. What, what, what's the funny? <laughs> Sorry. It's out of context, Jova. Go keep going. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, again, I think my only issue is like, well, if I had to choose between rat or bat, no offense to you, I probably would have gone with bat because, you know, for obvious reasons. Like he said, uh, like he said, referencing to the Francis for Coppola movie more than anything. Oh, there is that. You know, yeah. If you haven't watched it, I probably should pick it at some point. It's very good. In fact, in some cases, I think that's actually considered canon to the Castlevania timeline. It's, uh, okay, if you don't know, it's actually as Keanu Reeves was like a teen or something. And it's actually an unconventional Dracula story, because instead of just telling the story, classic story of him being the little of Akia, it's about sneakily telling that he's trying to move into England, actually, via ship. And it's about the characters figuring out, and along with Van Helsing, playing by Anthony Hawkins, trying to, see, to defeat it. Anyway, cloning biological weapons, genetic mutation, and biomechanical algorithms are some of the greater achievements of modern era. To attain them, the, the biochemic scientist have challenged God directly for <laughs> deforming his creation with arrogance and pride. Breaking laws of nature and or overstepping the bounds of ethics in their search and success, the power you know, meant little to them. However, uh, when he actually found his life of slavery and torment by of Satan, it's too late to repent, and now on the brink of the end of the war, mankind will pay for its irresponsibility. So there you go, Pedro. We actually have found scientists who literally said, what's, what's the fun in not challenging God? Exactly. <laughs> See? <laughs> Just another mm -hmm. step in saying that scientists are evil. Again, and yes, I, uh, most of the mechanics uh, with the rats Sorry. are actually chewing electric cables, or sacrificing obviously one of your rats in order to actually pass through. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean... I think the main issue issue people have with segments like this, or the stealth in general, is that it can feel like a pace breaker. Not necessarily always a bad thing, but if you were, like, say, coming in from the original Lords of Shadow game, which was, you know, mainly good old hack and slash, some, uh, yeah, of course some classic Castlevania bouts with, of course, some God of War and Shadow of the Colossus mix thrown in, to go to then a uh, more nuanced bout here, which has... A lot of these different like... genres and whatnot. Oh, no, no, ignore the phone. The technique, the condition, I'm probably is working on it. It's pro yeah. Ju um, some someone wants to have a word uh, with, uh, with us. Dracula is literally the care, and he wants to speak to with the manager. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, by possessing the scientists, let's uh, move inside. Nothing to uh, see thing here, to good see citizen. Here with uh, how I'm just limbering around, and while you get attacked by bats. It's all good. Don't pay mind to the cameras. Thank you. Pay no, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Or in this but case, yeah. moving like like a puppet. Again, I wouldn't say it's necessarily that all the ideas were bad. It's just about on how they placed them in. There's always something to consider with the sequel Imaging. here. Yes, introduce new ideas, articles. but be Remain careful when you're introducing ideas path. that, well kind of may clash with the main genre here. Like, when you think hack and slash, you don't normally think stealth. That's just a thing here. Doesn't necessarily mean the stuff is gonna be bad, but don't be surprised if some people may have complaints about it being there in this regard. I honestly just find in general the experience of entertaining enough to, to, I guess, not being too bothered by it. But again, uh, run out of time because we actually reached the main room. Something it seems that the archive might be present in the room. I wonder who could it be. It could be anyone. Oh, they're synthesizing something. Oh no, this is literally the Umbrella Corporation. 
You people have nothing better to do. And there she is. Uh, different from the others. The lead scientist. Uh, and not uh, and not exactly a gentle person, Raisa Bulkova. And yes, she also smokes. La lady, this it's is not a safe she's... environment. It's to show that she's evil. She's actually played by Alex Childs, who is also a TV actress, but she has done some minor voice acting video games. For a moment, I thought you were gonna say Alex Bornstein. Imagine yeah. that. And apparently, she decides to just smash everything. Okay, lady. You're the new test subjects. You know, maybe you could escape if you didn't complain about not being able to escape and just tried to escape. Uh, I guess the jig. Thankfully, Dracula is immune to this kind of thing. Oh, really? Um, you probably shouldn't be smoking in this room right now. <laughs> thankfully, since we discussed this, not combust. Also, I heard. I actually, I actually heard a vomit to sound the oh stock God. sound effect. Uh, Oh my god, that's uh, too. It's golden. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, I made a good point. It's like Golden Age Flash. Kinda. When, wait, wait. This is what I said. When was Castlevania Resident Evil? Whoa, whoa. These are basically gonna be the standard minions of the future segment. These humans mutated by the biochemic virus. It's funny you mentioned that, Dribs. This is one of the critiques some people had about it. Me, personally, I'm fine with it, and I get why it's done it. You know, I like, go well, modern settings and whatnot. I mean, okay, let's say on the one hand, when you get into Castlevania, normally you expect more fantastical stuff. Maybe a tiny bit of science here with your mad you scientist or whatnot, but yeah. This like, is like every other night, millions of cities and labor jump suffocated by the insignificant dating concerns. <laughs> they will never imagine that macabre virus was about to turn into grotesque blood thirsty beasts. After the initial spasm that violent to deform their body, the spawns of evil are ready to wreak havoc in the streets and massacre survivors and members of the new army of Satan. They use their hands, uh, still, still breathe fingers, to grab at objects and cause damage, uh, and clumsy shoot their firearms they find. Although it's already too late for them, they still hope that whatever you must receive a vaccine in time. Yeah. Let's uh, that's just move on. But, uh, yeah, okay, look. To some people... It's like, okay, so yeah, this is more or less Resident Evil. Like, you know, not necessarily a bad idea, but again, for Castlevania, it can be a bit weird. I think, okay, part of me does think that maybe a lot of these newer ideas would have been better received if, you know, this was like way later down in the series, but for obvious reasons, this was kind of the third and final game in the series. Mm -hmm. I think, I think Matt McMuscles put it best. This series was by no means bad. If anything, if anything, it did what even Konami thought was impossible. It reignited full-on interest for Castlevania. The problem was just that it never got to see its full potential because it yeah, I forgot. So much. I think I forgot to mention in the first game. This is actually the series when they the, that has sold the most out of the entire franchise. Not even joking. Like, trust me, that is no small feat. Especially for a reboot, mind you. And I think I got a new type of relic, but I will mention it later. Oh. Um. Raisa? Oh, shit. Well, I kind of prefer how you moved before, sweetie. I know, right? The golf look would have been cooler. This is a bit too many teeth for my taste. Sorry. I don't do that. Why do they always turn into elders abominations? That's so rude. Again, Shiroi, like, uh, <laughs> if you were doing all these wacky uh, experiments only to turn things into unimpressive impressive forms, I mean, that would just be not that interesting. But she could have stayed as she was. She kind of has a reason. Well, at least Zobek has a point. If we actually manage to capture her, she might lead to one of the, the acolytes. So. It's kind of like the villain of Cadillacs and Dinosaurs that mixes himself with uh, dinosaur DNA to become because. a human-dinosaur hybrid abomination. Ugh. Ugh. But yeah, I'll All admit, right, let's, let's try to capture her. I'll admit, it is weird that the game sort of puts her Oof. this early against you in that regard. Like, All I'll right. admit, if I were the... Oh, go on. 
The director of the Biochemic Laboratory is an aggressive, unscrupulous woman who is capable of hiding her true appearance from your eyes. Only the beasts of the night can see what she, what she truly is. A twisted reptilian creature that is as intelligent as it is dangerous. Durmgr, during the long uh, years dedicated to perfect the demonic virus, she kidnapped humans, experimented on them, and corrupted each of her cells to turn them into soldiers, warriors, Satan. In battle, she can conduct electricity and move fiendishly fast, even beyond the scope of Dracula's vampiric perception. But extreme cold can stop her and keep her mind in intact from Zobak, who wants to reap her secrets of Satan's acolytes from inside her. Oh, in well, look, we happen to have a sword that generates intense cold. That can do the trick. But yeah, I'll admit. If I were writing the story, Thanks, Patrick. It, okay. If I were writing the story, I probably wouldn't have had her, her, well, true face revealed just yet in that regard. And furthermore, probably would have saved for the confrontation with her way later down the line, given, well, just how important she is to the plot. Granted, this is where I do get the feeling, Tio. Mm -hmm. How much do you think that they really did have to like? put all their attractive. eggs in a basket. And by that I mean, how much you wanna bet that a lot of story details that they wanted to maybe spread out across certain games uh, all had to be squashed no into this idea. game's boss. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think I mentioned in one of the previous parts of the fact that uh, Mercury's team wanted to focus on a game set uh, in, Dr in Dracula's castle. There we go. But uh, Konami wanted to instead progress uh, in the modern to in the modern storyline. You know, so we literally at the end had to reach this compromise that just, you know, has to mash everything in one narrative. Oh, she likes it, Ralph. Uh, thank you. I, uh, uh, just, um, I think I forgot the bat uh, on the on the pressure plate. Uh, thank you. Sorry. But no. No, no, go ahead. I wanted to put him in the chair, but I think it's just going to be there, sure. Let's make this more exciting. Yes. Yeah, no. Oh, uh, sorry, go on. Oh, it's not. I was just going to get my slot. Yeah. Well, basically, she was like, okay, we got about your comment about not smoking in here. Well, uh, don't, well uh, let's just say back, uh, don't tell that to the Flash, and by that I mean 1940s Flash, where I'm not kidding, Shiroi, he's a scientist, separating the elements and all that, and he's working way down to 3.30 in the morning, and here's his actual line from the, from the first ever issue from, from 1940, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, the Golden Age field. Oh yeah, well, I was wondering about the exact year though too. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's actually four. Yeah, go ahead. I forgot to. Uh, he says, and I quote you, right? Three thirty. I need a smoke. No, <laughs> 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 no, she's she, trust me. Um, check out Flint Tara's uh, um, secret, uh, secret origins mod where he reads a lot of these old '90s police comics. These comics are so outdated, but at the same time, so hilarious because of the dialogue. <laughs> it's like he said at the beginning of the Holy Terror review. It's, you can still enjoy them in an actual ironic way. And, in, and obviously not the just the, the, the politically guess, charged or satirical oh, one, even the, the traditional ones. And by the, and by the way, sure, guess what happens after that? He has an a laboratory accident that knocks him out. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> well, actually, well, believe well, it or not, it has nothing to do with the super speed. Believe it or not, it has super speed. So it, has, it actually has nothing to do with the cigarettes, you're right. It's actually because lightning strikes him and douses him in chemicals. Which is what? ironic. Well, actually, no, that's what that's what happened to Barry, Jova. No, actually, John, talking about the original uh, Flash Comics number Jay one. Jay Garrick. Uh, where, where, where it's, it's the... Well, actually, I'm gonna, let me get the page because I have to read this because even if I just paraphrase but, uh, it, sure, but, but it is true. But, 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 but it is true. Barry Allen in the Silver Age instead was actually reading an in-universe comic of Jay Garrick, you know, um, and then because of coincidences, a bolt of lightning struck him while he was literally doused in random chemicals from a scaffold he was working on. It's literally, and it's The literally best thing about it is that it happens, it exactly happens the same, same thing again to Wally West, the Kid Flash, when he's introductory story. The writers of the Flash stories were kind of so, you know, creatively bankrupt that they had no other idea than to create a supporting Flash character than to create the exact same coincidence. They sort of retconned this into being that it was meant to be like this unbelievable miracle, which yeah. meant something gifted, which would eventually become known as the Speed Force. There we go. Are you done, lady? Can we actually talk? 
Is she dead? Well, we've got her. <laughs> <She's> oh. <laughs> Patrick, uh, I'm unconscious. Okay. Patrick, can you put some more effort into the next take, thank you. You sounded generally concerned. <laughs> we've got her exhausted and on her back. We know what to do now. We're just taking her in, Dwids. Get your mind out of the gutter. I was going to say about the well, it's time for an interrogation scene, actually. What colors by underwear? Let's see if Patrick Stewart can actually double as Jack Bauer. Actually, no, we're gonna do that in the next part. Oof, <laughs> forgot. You know, I would actually buy uh, Patrick Stewart playing an older Jack Bauer. <laughs> Oh, anyway, interesting. anyway, like I said, in the next part we'll have this Jack Bauer interrogation and move on from there. See ya. See ya. Yeah. See ya. No, but you want to hear the best part, Joy? Like in that comic, they're working on "quote unquote" hard water uh, and creating a gas from it, and then that gas that from the accent that he breathes all night gives him the super speed. And according to the scientists, because they actually try to explain it scientifically how it works and they say that and i'm not kidding sure this is a natural line from the comic the gas injects him like a vaccination <laughs> that's not how it works what? that's not how <laughs> it works that's the thing sure you have to understand okay. at, at the time sure these comics were written by people who had no idea about how science medicine or anything worked they just wrote whatever because who cares it there's sounded no cool <laughs> it sounded cool there's no actual standard that has been set so what who cares, right? Remember, Shiro, like it's like I always say, logic hadn't been invented in the 1940s yet. So, 